Thin layer chromatography, also known as TLC, is an analytical technique that separates compounds in a mixture. It is commonly used to determine the purity of a product or for assessing the progress of a reaction. Today we are going to be assessing the purity of a product and seeing whether any starting material remains. In the reaction I wanted to convert compound X to compound Y, so I have produced a sample of my final product P. I now need to run a TLC of a sample of my final product P against samples of pure X and pure Y to see whether my product is pure Y or whether there is still some unreacted compound X in my final product. First you start by softly drawing a straight line about 1cm from the bottom of the plate and marking on the plate where you will spot your samples as well as a co-spot. It's very important to always draw on the plate using pencil, not pen, as the ink in the pen will run up the TLC plate and interfere with the results. It is also important not to press down too hard onto the plate so that the silica is not disturbed. Then use a capillary tube to spot a sample of compound X onto the mark labelled X on the TLC plate. Make sure there is enough sample spotted on the TLC plate, so make sure to spot two to three times. Also spot on the mark labelled Co. This is the Co spot where you will spot all three samples on top of each other and the results of the Co spot will act as a useful reference when analysing the plate. When finished with the capillary tube, make sure to dispose of it in a suitable place. Then repeat the spotting process using a clean capillary tube for the other solutions on the appropriately labelled mark on the TLC plate and make sure to also spot each solution on the co-spot. Now it is time to prepare the TLC tank. First, place a small piece of filter paper into the bottom of the chamber. This will prevent the TLC plate from slipping when you put it in. Now pour some suitable solvent into the chamber to around 0.5cm from the bottom. This solvent is known as the eluent and is the mobile phase in TLC. Then place the lid onto the top of the chamber and leave for a few minutes as this prevents the solvent from evaporating and ensures that the tank becomes saturated with eluent vapour. Once the chamber is saturated with eluent, remove the lid and using tweezers carefully place the TLC plate onto the bottom of the chamber and immediately place the lid back onto the top. TLC works by exploiting the different degrees to which different compounds interact with the stationary phase as they pass over or through this phase as part of the mobile phase. In TLC, the stationary phase is a silica-coated TLC plate, which you can see in front of you. The mobile phase is a solvent which the TLC plate is placed into and is what causes the compounds to run up the plate. Allow the eluent to run up the plate to within around 0.5cm from the top of the plate and then remove the plate from the chamber using tweezers. Then quickly draw a line marking where the eluent ran up to. This is known as the solvent front and remember to use pencil. More often than not the spots on the plate are colourless so we need to use several techniques that visualise the spots on the TLC plate. The most common technique is to first look at the plate under a UV lamp. We then draw around the spots that are visualised using pencil, being as accurate as possible. However, UV does not always visualise all of the spots on our plate, and as it is a non-destructive technique, it is common to also check using a dip, such as permanganate. Dip the TLC plate into the dip, and then dry using a hairdryer to remove any excess dip. The spots will turn one colour and the rest of the TLC plate will turn another, giving us the chance to confirm the position of our spots or to view new spots. By comparing the spots in the channel for mark P with the spots for the co-spot, this plate shows that product P is a mixture that contains more than one compound and hence is not pure compound Y and still contains some of the starting material compound X. Now we need to measure the RF values for our spots. Firstly, you use a ruler to measure the distance travelled by the solvent front from the baseline. Here it is 3.2 centimetres. Then you measure the distance from the baseline where the samples were spotted to the middle of each spot on the plate, noting down these values. For example, the distance compound X has travelled is 1.5 centimetres. You also need to repeat this measurement for every spot on the plate. RF value stands for a retention factor, which shows how far a compound has moved compared to the solvent front. It is calculated by dividing the distance travelled by the compound by the distance travelled by the solvent front. For example, for compound X, the RF value is 1.5 over 3.2 and is equal to 0 
RF values have no units and always remember to quote them to two decimal places.